So I guess the first thing to say about these is there's three examples in this video. Um, you can have a look at them all together or one at a time. Feel free to pause the video, perhaps even turn down the sound and just watch the process. See if you can calculate the answers to each of these as I do them um, and see if we get the same answers. And if you don't, let me know. Um, we can always check and make sure that we haven't made any silly mistakes along the way. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to have a look at what happens to the pH of a solution after it's been diluted. So here we have um, some nitric acid, HNO3, in solution. We know that the initial volume of the solution is 5 mils. And I'm already going to convert that to 0 0.005 litres only because I know that if I'm looking at concentrations in moles per litre, I'm going to have to get that back to litres just for consistency sake. So you can see I've also got an initial concentration, which is equal to 0 0.01 moles per litre. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute this to a 100 mil solution. So my final volume is, equal to be, is going to be equal to be 100 mils which is going to be 0.1 litres. And I need to calculate the pH of the dilute solution. So in order to calculate the pH of the dilute solution, we need to uh, use our formula, which uh, is that pH is minus the log base 10 of the concentration of hydrogen ions. So I need the concentration of hydrogen ions to do this question. I also know that because I'm dealing with nitric acid, it's a monoprotic acid. So therefore, if I uh, just move it over here a little bit, I know that when it ionizes in water, and I'll just simplify this a little bit to H plus ions and NO3 minus ions, and of course they're aqueous. The important thing here is the mole ratio is going to be one to one. Now, if I include water, which is a better way of doing it, um, I'm just a little bit cramped for space, um, the ratio will still be one to one and the form of the hydrogen will be the hydronium ion H3O plus and that's fine. So what I need is this concentration. So what I want to know is what is the final concentration of the solution and then that's what I'm going to plug into my equation. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to need to um, have to find the relationship between the initial solution and the final solution. Now I know that I always put my name on my CV, so the number of moles is equal to the concentration multiplied by the volume. Now one of the important things about this is if I look at the initial number of moles, I can multiply the um, initial concentration by the initial volume, but I'm also aware that I haven't actually added any of my uh, acid during the dilution, I've only added water. So therefore, the number of moles initially is the same as the number of moles finally. So these two values are the same. And what that means is that the C initial V initial is equal to C final V final, because I just put these two equal to each other. Because I don't know the final one, if I divide both sides by VF, I'm going to be able to find the final concentration is going to be the initial concentration 0 0.01 multiplied by the initial volume which is 0 0.005 and then I'm going to divide all of that by 0 0.1 which is my final volume and that is going to give me and I'll just um, pop this on the calculator so 0 0.01 times 0 0.005 and then divided by uh, 0.1 is going to give me a value of um, 5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per litre. To find my pH, then I put that value in. So pH is equal to minus the log base 10 of 5 times 10 to the minus 4. And that's going to give me a pH value of 3.3. Uh, It's hard on these little slides to set these things out um, vertically and make sure that you have everything neat and tidy. And it, and it doesn't really matter at this point as much whether you can get to the right solution. It's obviously better if you can. But 
that you make sure that your sequence is easy for a marker to follow, that they know what formulas you've used, what values you've used. And if you have made a mistake anywhere, as I may have, I can go back in and check uh, anywhere along the line, were my initial values correct? Uh, were my final values correct? What assumptions did I make about what was going to be used? How did I rearrange the equations in order to try and solve the problem? Substitute my values, find my initial um, number, and then use that number to calculate my final result. So setting your workout is really, really important.